Time Walk with Me. Hey everybody, welcome back to Time Walk with Me. I am the Time Walker, and you are quite possibly Jeff, but probably not. But if you are, then I just made your day. You're welcome, Jeff. This deck is a fairly simple one. There aren't many categories, and it might make sense to you if you know this commander. He's Kiki Jiki the Mirror Breaker. Or no, just Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, not the Mirror Breaker. This dude is a legendary 2-2 Goblin Shaman, or Shaman, I say Shaman, with haste that costs a whopping 5 mana. It's mono red, so it doesn't really matter how much of that cost is red and how much is generic. He has haste, and you can tap him to create a temporary copy of target non-legendary creature that you control. The copy has haste and gets sacrificed at the beginning of the next end step. That means that the token will give you an enters the battlefield trigger, he leaves the battlefield trigger, a sacrifice trigger, and a death trigger. It can also attack the turn it enters the battlefield, so you can use it on a creature that you just cast for a nice disposable attacker. This category comprises a few different strategies, but I didn't feel like separating them out, so here they are all lumped together. I think they give the deck versatility and make the deck more fun to play. Ruck Egg. This one is pretty self-explanatory. You copy the egg, the egg dies at the end of the turn, then you get a flying 4-4 bird. Earth Cult Elemental. This creature might hurt you a little when you first play it, so you have to make sure you can handle having to sacrifice a permanent, but after that, you can just sacrifice the copy if you roll any of the bad numbers. Tyrant of Care Ridges. It's a big flying body that does damage when it ETBs, and it gets bigger when you pump red mana into its fire breathing ability. Dockside Extortionist. This came in one of the first commander decks I ever bought. I don't think I would have one otherwise. It's very sought after, and the deck it came with is difficult to find, and of course, as expensive as the Dockside Extortionist himself. But the payoff for using it in this deck is obvious. When it enters the battlefield, you get a treasure token for every artifact and enchantment your opponents control. That's a lot of treasure, potentially. Ruin Grinder. This allows you and anyone else who wants to, to get a brand new 7 card hand. You can use it politically, or just to refill an empty hand. Dual Caster Mage. This is great if you're playing against a spell slinger deck, or someone whose instants and sorceries do things that your deck, by virtue of being red, has difficulty doing, like destroying enchantments. Humble Defector. Red doesn't get to draw for free, but the price you pay for drawing with this creature is an interesting one. When you use your copy of Humble Defector to draw two cards, control of it passes to an opponent who may or may not have offered you something in return. Because you no longer control the token, you can't sacrifice it, so it stays on the battlefield, being passed around the table like a certain object at a Grateful Dead concert. The more copies you make, the more go into circulation, creating a fun situation where everybody is drawing like crazy. Fault Grinder. This kills a land when it enters the battlefield. That's a mean thing to do, and I'm a bad person for putting it into this deck, but it's a power that I think I can handle without abusing. Hopefully. Magus of the Wheel. You wouldn't normally see a 3-3 for 3 mana in red, but Magus of the Wheel is far from normal. Its main use is in its ability, which involves tapping and sacrificing it to make everyone discard their hand and draw 7 cards. So you can see why it wasn't thought of as a combat-centered creature, though it can also serve as that if you really want it to. In fact, because you'll be making a copy of this creature to sacrifice, the original can be relegated to combat. In any case, it probably won't stay on the board for long. Meteor Golem as long as your ramp game is strong, this can be a great fit for any deck, especially when late game answers to problem permanents are needed. And repeatable late game answers are especially handy. Sandstone Oracle. Is one of your opponent's decks better than yours at drawing? Not anymore. With one of these hitting the battlefield every time you need or want to top up your hand, not to mention a good sized flyer for offense or defense, you won't find yourself falling behind. Staunch Throne Guard. With this card, you can take and retake the throne whenever you need to without the need for messy combat. It makes a good blocker, too. Crimson Fleet Commodore. This also helps you to always have the throne. It makes a good attacker, too. Dragon Egg. When this egg dies, which the token copy will do at the end of the turn, you get a small fire breathing dragon. Ember Wild Captain. This helps you stay the Monarch while punishing your opponents for attacking you, which is treason. 
Filigree Familiar. A repeatable, self-destructing token copy of this creature keeps your life total high and your hand full. Flame Tongue Kavu. Kavu? Flame Tongue Kavu. This is a decent attacker that keeps the field free of chump blockers. Sparring Construct. This can help pump up a big flyer by giving it a plus one plus one counter every turn. Irreverent Revelers. Since your copy of this will already have haste, you can repeatedly destroy problem artifacts or even simply artifacts that look at you funny. Torch Fiend. Here's another creature that can help you deal with artifacts. Defiant Ogre. More artifact destruction. Scrapyard Recombiner. This is in here for its modular ability. When the copy dies, it gives its counters to another creature, which means two plus one plus one counters every turn. Arcbound Slasher. This is even better for pumping up creatures, giving five counters to another creature every turn. Arcbound Tracker. If I wanted to focus this deck more, I would include all the modular creatures I can find and reasonably fit into this deck, and put in a lot of cheap dragons. Revolutionist. There aren't many instants and sorceries in this deck, so this might get replaced with a modular creature once I find another. Mere Scrappling. Plus one, plus one counters. Enough said. Tormod's Crypt Keeper. It's targeted, repeatable graveyard hate. No one will be reanimating on my watch. Solemn Simulacrum. This creature's token copy gives you a land and a card every turn. Flame Rush Rider. Two of these guys copying a big dragon makes for a decent threat. Containment Construct. When red decks draw, it's usually at the cost of discarding, so this helps me keep cards I would otherwise lose. Mech Titan Core. This is just a fun card. The idea is to crew it, make a copy of it, and then use the copy's ability to make a really awesome token creature without losing the core vehicle. Tawashi Guidebot. This modifies multiple creatures when used repeatedly, so its draw ability can be used cheaply. Workhorse. With Kikijiki, this gives me four free colorless mana during my turn, or a one-time surge of eight mana. Dragon Mage. If I can get this through someone's defenses, this is a repeatable Wheel of Fortune, and having a copy of it allows me to use it twice, or use it every turn without risking losing the original. Wildfire Devils. This could end up giving me copies of my opponent's best spells, or even my own. Or it could end up whiffing. Pillardrop Warden. This is a good defense against flying creatures, and its ability allows me to repeatedly get instants and sorceries back from my graveyard. Biblioplex Assistant. This works like Pillardrop Warden, except it puts the instants or sorceries on top of my library, so it's best used at the end of an opponent's turn, just before my turn begins. Redcap Gutter Dweller. This becomes a repeatable source of 1-1 rats that can't block. Burning Sun's Avatar. Is this the avatar of a sun that is burning, or the burning avatar of the sun? What is the natural state of a sun's avatar? The world may never know. Burnished Heart. This is handy on its own, but it's even better when used repeatedly with Kiki Jiki. Gilded Lotus. Thran Dynamo. Palladium Mirror. Worn Power Stone. Seer's Lantern. Sisei's Ring. Gauntlet of Power. This makes everyone's mountains tap for two mana instead of one, and it also buffs all the red creatures on the battlefield. Wayfarer's Bauble. Vessel of Volatility. Arcane Signet. Mindstone. Soul Ring. Coveted Jewel. And Mana Flare. This doubles everyone's land-based mana production, so hopefully I can use it more to my advantage than my opponents can to theirs. Jandor's Saddlebags. Kiki Jiki gets much better when you can use him more than once a turn. Mage Right Stone. Same as Jandor's Saddlebags. Fireball. This is here to be a win condition, or perhaps a small board wipe as long as I can generate enough mana to make it worth casting. Weaponize the monsters. Since the token copies will be dying anyway, I might as well shoot them at someone. Tormenting Voice. Faithless Looting. Felden of the Third Path. This guy is like Kiki Jiki, but for creatures in my graveyard. Impact Tremors. This card is much more impactful in decks that put out creatures faster, but it's still not bad here. Crackling Emergence. 
With this, I can make a temporary token copy of one of my lands, which can come in handy if the land has a sacrifice ability that I want to abuse. According to the rulings, the copy won't be a creature, since the token only copies what is printed on the original creature. But the original creature isn't a creature, so I think the copy will just be a land. Splinter Twin. This turns a creature into its own Kiki-Jiki. There are many ways for this to go infinite, but I don't do that in this deck. And Stone Splitter Bolt. This can take down a very big creature for a relatively low cost. Mountain, of course. Den of the Bugbear. I think that if you use this land's ability to turn it into a 3-2 goblin and Kiki-Jiki copies it, the token will be a land and not a creature unless you pay 4 mana to turn it into one after. Of course, the token will enter the battlefield tapped, so it won't be very useful. Majoring Network. Memorial to War. Smoldering Spires. Dwarven Mine. Captivating Cave. Sunken Citadel. Volatile Fault. Cave of Temptation. Temple of the False God, and Field of Ruin. So that's it. That is my Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker deck. What do you think of that? Tell me good things. Tell me it's good. Tell me I'm good. And I'll see you next time.